Hi guys, how you going? Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new, welcome. What we're going to be going through today is focusing primarily on the new King's Brackets for the 270 awning. I believe they're probably the same brackets for the slightly larger one, and even the 180 awning. So you could use it for all three. But yeah, these ones are a little bit more versatile than the original brackets that came out um, a couple of years back. So I'll give you a good look at these. And there's an actual design flaw in them as well, which is easily fixed, but I'll take you through that as well. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so these are the new Kings Plus adjustable heavy duty powder coated steel brackets. So the original ones that came with the awning were a little bit inflexible. So they come out with these new brackets, which are supposed to be a lot better. And for my purposes, because of the way I want to mount it, definitely a lot better. Again, we've got the gussets. Now, I've found out since after speaking to a few people, there's a bit of a flaw with these. You actually need to drill another hole in the gusset here. Because what's happening is, the, because the, the, the actual awning is only um, basically fixed at one point, what happens is that actual awning can flip. Um, you'll see what I mean when I put it up, but basically you've just got to drill an additional hole in. So, no big deal. So you got your brackets. Um, so it comes with all your screws and your little bits and pieces. So you're, you're covered with absolutely everything. Now these brackets are a little bit different to the original King's awning brackets. The original King's awning brackets actually had three separate brackets. Um, which they were very inflexible, very strong but very inflexible. Whereas these ones now you only need two brackets. So the way this works is what will happen is that will get mounted. That's what the back of the um, awning gets mounted to. And then what, what's going to happen is you've got this gusset which will pull into here depending on the position. So if you've got that there. You can either have it in that position there, or that position there, okay? Um, and then what's going to happen is you've got this piece here, which then goes here and gets fixed with the gusset, and yeah. So that's basically it. All right, and which is exactly what I need for my, what I'm trying to do. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Next step, okay. So I've just shown you the brackets. So this is what they look like assembled. So obviously there's two of them. Uh, in the original unit, when you bought the awning, there was a set of brackets that came with it. But with this current one, this is the latest model, the King's Plus one, uh, no brackets come with it. And these are the brackets you need to purchase additional. Again, as per the original one, there was three. Now there's only two, so they've redesigned it. And again, mate, they're hardcore, heavy duty. <laughs> That's gonna take a lot of load. But obviously just make sure you mount it properly to your roof rack. So this is the section that gets mounted to your roof rack. Uh, this is the section that gets mounted to the back of the awning. Now, this can be mounted this way. It can be mounted this way. Um, the position of these um, gussets in the bracket can be at the very top, can be here, can be down here, whichever way you need to. Now, in my instance, with my um, awning and my roof rack set up, I'm limited in that I work in the city and I go into a lot of undercar garages and pretty much two, 2.1 2 is my absolute max limit. So whatever the top flush for the roof rack is pretty much my limit. So I'm going to make sure that this, the top of this, hopefully does not exceed the roof rack. So hence I'm mounting my awning off to the side but below the top level. All right, now as I mentioned previously, with this, if this is fixed in this position, right, it's bolted here, once you put weight on this, this is actually gonna fall forward, okay? So we need to drill an additional hole in here, and it's gonna end up going through three layers of steel, so be prepared for that, um, on both sides, okay? To give it the strength it needs. If it was mounted in that position, and it's bolted at the top, it's a different story. The downward pressure is gonna force that against that, but I would still pop in the additional bolt. Because I'm actually mounting it to some round tubing, 
I've got these little U clamps, okay? Just, they come galvanized, I've just spray painted them black. So I'm gonna be using four of these on each bracket, okay? You wanna bolt it to as multiple places as possible. In particular, this awning weighs about, about 27 kilo and there's a lot of pressure on its pivot point, okay? At this end here. So you wanna make sure that it's fixed at as multiple points as possible. You don't want too much pressure in the one area, okay? So that's for me. So that's that. So this is where one bracket needs to be, okay? And obviously that's the pivot point. So anywhere in this area should be fine. You won't know exactly, I suppose, until you get it on the roof rack and then open it up to see where you want the overhang over your rear door. And then depending on how much roof rack you've got, again, I think it's gonna end up you know, over here somewhere. So we'll see how we go. All right, now with this too. So in my instance, that the roof rack's gonna be on top of this, okay? So then based on that, I want, yeah, so I've got plenty of play to put this into any position. I think we'll get it up there, eyeball it and see what the deal is. All right, and then we've got our other bolts through the hole. Slide them on. So two per track. And you'll notice that with the bolts, there's some shorter ones and longer ones. You use the shorter ones to make the bracket and then use the longer ones in this. Okay. There you go. Now, we're doing this, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna test fit it without the bag. Get everything lined up. Because then we need to pierce holes into the back of the bag at exactly the right place. So we're trying to do it in that random position. We'll make sure that the other side um, is roughly in the right position. Um, and then we're gonna go pop it up and see how it looks and get it positioned right and line everything up. All right, guys. So this is that extra bolt I was talking about. So we'll put one on this side, one on this side. Now I won't tell you how much trouble I had drilling this damn hole. I went through so many drill bits. I did it on the drill press and yeah. I ended up having to uh, have it sent off to a friend to do. So, but yeah, so that's the whole reason I needed that because I'm mounting this in this position, okay? And if I didn't have that bolt there, this would fold forward. So I needed that there to complete it because this bracket is designed to actually sit on top of the roof rack, like so. Whereas I don't want it on top. So the idea is for that to happen. Based on that, it's almost flush with the top of my roof rack, which is what I'm after. And then what I also had to do was I had to modify this bracket and chop it down a fraction. Okay? Don't freak out, it's plenty strong enough. So, um, yeah. All right, cool. Let's go. All right, guys, so in addition to those other holes in the sides, I've just popped these two new holes here, and this is just custom for my roof rack, okay? Depending on the, how, the, how the configuration of your roof rack will determine what modifications and changes you make to the bracket. So I'll show you how it all looks now. All right, guys, so brackets are all fully mounted. And I stress, this is what works for my setup and my roof rack. So as you can see here, and I'll give you a shot from above, 
I've got these two U-bolts and then these U-bolts fixed to these two bars. It is like rock solid as. It's as close as possible to the mounting point here for strength. The only thing I would probably redo is I should have cut down the bolts just to make it easy to, to tighten up the, the nuts. So that made it a bit of a, a pain, but we got it done. So that, that looks really, really good. It's solid as, and uh, yeah, extremely happy with it. Okay, so that's that one. I'll give you a closer look at the other one. So as you can see here, same sort of setup, same deal. It just so works out that the position of this was to the left. And the main reason was the end of the awning, this can be no more than 800. So that falls within that range, okay? All right, so you can see with this one here, same sort of deal, U-bolts, both front and back, fixed as close as possible to this main bar and then this mounting bracket. And from under underneath, you can see that we've actually cut down the U-bolts on this side which made it super easy because we could get the ratchet on them. Otherwise, the other one had to be done by with a, a ring spanner and by finger. It was an absolute pain in the ass. Okay, but she's absolutely rock solid. Super, super happy. And what makes this easier is because I actually chopped the top of these, when you put the bolts on the back of the awning for fitting, it's really easy because you just literally lift it up. Um, you have the nuts on it already and just look, literally hook it on there and it makes it super, super easy. So super happy on how this all came out. All right, guys, well, that's, that's a quick look at the, the new King's brackets. Now, I found them extremely easy to use. The way they were meant to be designed, they are definitely fit for purpose, okay? The only difference is I wanted to do something special in relation to mine and I wanted to change the way that the brackets were mounted. So hence I had to make that modification. So if you want to mount them the way they were designed, you will not have to modify the brackets at all. But for my purposes, and it turned out really, really well. Again, I did, um, obviously I've taken it back into the city and I've gone through multiple floors, checking the height, driven it all around and had no issues at all. So it definitely achieved what I wanted it to do. In addition, the doors is what I was concerned about also because of the height and you can open the doors easily, no issues. Now, the, the brackets are super, super strong. So there's no concerns there. Um, again, struggled immensely in relation to drilling them and eventually got it all done, so it was no big deal, but I've definitely got no concerns in relation to, I suppose, the quality of the bracket and whether or not it can take the weight. Um, I've had the awning open all the way. I've had every panel filled with water in addition um, as part of the testing process. And if you go check out, there's another video on the channel which goes into the detail of how the awning performs in the rain. So you can get a really, really good look at that one. Um, it's been quite a popular video because there's no one else out there that has done that. So it's been tested extensively in the rain so you can see what it's like and sort of how it all holds up. Yeah, and one of the things that you've got to realise too is with the other three versions of this awning, you've got, this is the, the 270 Tourer, you've got the 270 um, XL, you've got the 270 Tourer XL, and then you've also got the 180 and um, this bracket will suit all of those. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of them may come with the original brackets, but or I'm pretty sure, or this set of brackets may be available for all three of them. So you just have to double check with your King store. Would highly recommend the brackets, and again, not just for King's awnings. If you've got other awnings out there that you need to um, fit, to your car roof racks and they don't come with brackets and you're going to buy them separately um, this is definitely a good option for you so i would uh, definitely consider it all right guys again you can see me cracking open the kitchen there <laughs> um, again there'll be a video on the channel if there's not already um, go check it out a lot of the gear i've got in my car is king's gear 
because I've had no issues with the King's Gear. Again, it may be cheap or it may be just simply a fair price for what you get, but the gear is quality. I don't care what anyone says. So I'll keep buying it and until it lets me down, then maybe I'll stop. But to date, uh, all of the King's Gear I've per purchased for the car um, has never let me down. As you can see there, actually, I just purchased the, the new King's 200 watt solar panel. That's about to be mounted to the roof rack. Or should I say, it is mounted now. Again, go to the channel and check that one out also. And you'll see that fitted to the car. Uh, and works amazingly. And I've got a, quite a unique take on it um, in relation to the way I fitted it to the roof rack. Because I still wanted to be able to use the entire roof rack in full. So um, go to the channel and check that out. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the content. Apologies for the length of the videos. <laughs> Um, sometimes they're all a bit long, but I try to go into as much detail as possible and hoping at, at the minimum that you'll at least pick something up that you can use in your installation or it makes your lives a little bit easier. Again, any feedback, any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Um, again, share the video around to friends and family uh, and to other people out there. Obviously, I've got the Pajero, but this will work on, the, on any four-wheel drive. So, all right, guys, I'll... Um, see you out in the tracks out in the road or um in the next video see you guys cheers Bye.